so I decided to lay out all of the supplies on the floor of the studio for now just so you can see everything very clearly and I'll talk you through some of them in just a moment and we're going to be testing them as well so I'll move some of them to the desk. There are some pieces that I won't be testing in this video. Let me just get down here. I'm standing, I'm gonna have to <laughs> To bend down and get down here to show you. I won't be testing the Holbein Acryla gouache because I use these all the time in my work and if you'd like to see me talking about them and using them you can look at some of my older videos. Some of them are labelled as such so you should be able to find them. I might do a special video about these if any of you decide you would like that but just let me know if you do. But basically I got um, a pale peach and a navy blue, two colours that I haven't had before. I just thought they're beautiful colours together. The other supplies I won't be testing in this video are these um, paints, acrylic paints by Golden. It's their heavy body acrylic colour. Let's see if we can focus that a little bit better. Um, I bought gorgeous shades here, light orange, teal and titan green pale. So um, I look forward to using those but I'm going to be doing a special video on golden paints because these are new paints to me and the South Bank Art Company very kindly sent me eight different colours so I'm adding to those. Um, so I'm going to be doing a video experimenting with them because these are paints that I've been wanting to try for absolutely years and I haven't. Um, so yeah, that will be coming up. The other golden product I bought was this super matte medium. This is a gloss reducing medium um, that you add to the acrylic paints to make them a bit more matte. I've just been editing the video and um, I need to refilm this bit because there was something wrong with this section of the footage. So I just want to show you the sketchbook. Um, this is a moleskin sketchbook. I have a black one exactly the same as this, which I absolutely love. I don't know whether you can tell, but this one is um, a dark navy blue. So um, I have this to work in alongside my other one. My other one is for experiments and colour swatches. This one is going to be for um, what I call my proper drawings <laughs> and paintings that will be developed into larger paintings and bigger works of art. So that's what that one's going to be used for. I hope that made sense. Um, and this is Archer's watercolour paper hot pressed so that means that it's really smooth um, I usually work on textured watercolour paper so this is something new for me and I don't think I've ever worked on Archer's paper before but I know it's supposedly very good it's very um, high quality paper um, this has 12 sheets and they're 10 by 14 inches so I look forward to trying that out as well so on to the pencils and paint markers and so on. Right, first of all, I decided to order these. These are Caran d'Ache Neo Color 1. Now Neo Color 1, um, these are the ones that aren't water soluble and I got those deliberately because I didn't want them smudging in my sketchbook or on any of the finished artwork and apparently these stay put. I have it on good authority. Um, so I've never tried them before. I'm really excited to try these because I've heard very good things about them. They're kind of like a wax crayon that's really highly pigmented. Um, slightly different to the wax crayons you would have used when you were young. But um, yeah, I got, I think it was 32 different colours of these and I bought them all separately. I decided not to get um, a ready-made tin or set because I wanted to be able to choose my colours and as you can see I did get quite an array let's see if we can get that to focus yeah um, I did get quite an array of colours some of these colours are not kind of within my usual palette like the really bright yellow 
and the red and so on but I thought it would be a good idea to have a red and a yellow in there just in case I wanted to add a really bright splash of colour. I actually bought two metallics as well. I decided to get bronze and gold. Um, I just thought it'd be interesting to experiment with them really so it'd be it'll be fun to swatch those and see how shiny they are. The pens are Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen and they are the soft brush pens. I just got three shades of these. I've never used them before, so I didn't want to buy too many in case I don't get on with them. But um, I am hoping that they will provide a really nice way of um, laying down some color and filling in larger areas. And I think they look like um, watercolor when they're on the paper. So we've got cold gray, dark indigo and warm gray. So it'd be fun to try those out and see how they look later. Now these enormous beasts are Liquitex acrylic markers. Um, I decided to get just three because again, I've never tried these before. Um, they're unbleached titanium, cobalt turquoise hue and light portrait pink. I think they make a really nice palette together and um, I'll be interested to see. I have seen a demonstration of these and they looked fantastic, but it'll be interesting to actually use them myself. They have the most enormous nib <laughs> and it's actually, I think, a sponge and the paint comes down onto the sponge and you use them kind of, I guess, as you would a paintbrush really, just to fill in large areas of color and then I can hopefully work on top as well. I went a little bit crazy with the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. Now I've heard really great things about these. I know that Emma Carlyle uses them a lot in her work. My usual colour palette of, oh, that one's going to fall, don't fall. Greys and blues and sepias and like a really pale violet there as well. Um, kind of a taupe colour, but um, they look really beautiful try and get a nice close-up of those. There you go. Um, I also got some brighter colours. So I decided to get greens and some apricots and oranges and so on. Um, I think I got in total 24 pencils and again I decided to buy them uh, separately, individually, rather than going for a tin because then I can choose exactly the colours I want. Now these two pencils I got in just black and white. Um, they're supposedly pencils that will go over paper, glass, plastic and metal. So I think that they will draw on top of anything. It will be interesting to see whether this is true. The final item I bought was this Jackson's own brand little wooden box to keep all of my Neo Colour crayons and the coloured pencils in. Um, it has this little extra section here. I haven't got anything in this at the moment because the Neo Colours are just a tiny bit too long, whichever way I put them, <laughs> to go in there. So I'll probably keep erasers and uh, pencil sharpener in there. I need to find out how I sharpen the Neo colours. Um, I don't know whether I do that with a sharpener or just with a knife, but we'll see. Um, but even though it looks like it's overflowing slightly in these two sections, because the lid is quite deep, it does actually close properly. So that will be really handy to keep on my desk. Okay, so now we're on to the fun part, which is the swatching. And this is what I've been longing to do ever since these art materials arrived. So um, we're gonna start with the Neo Color Crayons and then I'm gonna move on to the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. And then I will do the Liquitex paint markers and the Pit brush pens. Okay, so let's get swatching. Um, where shall I start? Shall I start with the metallics? I think I will. Let's just move these out of the way so I've got a little bit of space to do this. Now let's see how these feel. 
should I swatch like this? Let's go this way. Well, my first impression is that they are incredibly smooth and creamy. And that really, I don't know whether you can see that on camera, I'm trying to get it to catch the light. But this is the metallic bronze and it really is, it has a subtle shine to it. I guess you'd call it a sheen more than a shine. <laughs> but I really like that, that's beautiful. That's a really lovely colour. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm shaking the camera again. This is always a problem when I'm kind of scribbling. Um, right, underneath, where's my pencil? I want to write, um, I want to write the colours so I have a good colour chart. This is half the fun. So that's bronze. I'll speed up some of this footage, by the way, so you don't have to sit through me colour swatching absolutely everything. But we'll just do the first few so you can see what they're like. Right, this is the gold. It's just gold, yeah. That also, that has actually a more subtle sheen than the bronze. And it's a slightly greenish gold. That's quite an interesting colour, actually. I kind of have a feeling I could use this for landscapes, which I wasn't expecting at all. But I have to say, I love the feel of these. They may look a bit like a wax crayon, but they're not anything like the wax crayons you would have drawn with, as I said earlier. They're so smooth. Right. I don't know how this is going to show up very well, but we'll just do the white anyway. I mean, I can see it showing up slightly, but I don't think you will on camera. No, probably not. <laughs> I think I'm going upwards. I'm doing an upwards slant. Um, it's because I've got I've got this overhead <laughs> and I can't lean in or you'll see my head. Um, right, let's try the black. I wonder how to get a better point on these. I mean, if I don't have a very good point, it does mean that I have to be a bit more maybe expressive and less precise, but I think I may have to sharpen them with a knife. Okay, so next let's go on to just grey. Oh, this is a nice one. Okay, I have a feeling I'm going to be using this one a lot. Can you see those clearly? They're really lovely shades. I'm very excited to see what I can do with these crayons. Yeah, that one's light grey. That's another gorgeous colour. I'm always really attracted to greys in all their forms. I think they work so well with, um, with different colours like greys with a gorgeous mustard or a beautiful pink. Um, okay, let's continue. I may have to speed up this footage. I finished swatching the Neo Color Crayons and my first impressions are that I'm going to love working with them. I think they're going to be fantastic for layering, whether that's over paint or I guess they're going to layer over colored pencil as well, but I'm thinking especially paint. Um, my favorite colors of the ones I've swatched, I think, 
are the greys, um, the Payne's grey is just beautiful. Um, Prussian blue is lovely as well. And these gorgeous bright um, blues and greens here. And I also really like the salmon colour. Um, some of them are more creamy and buttery than others. I think the Toledo Brown was the most um, gritty feeling, but some of them, they're just so smooth, they go on like butter. So there you go, a finished page in my sketchbook of swatched Neocolor crayons. Time to swatch the Caran d'Ache Luminance. I'm very excited about these pencils. I kind of feel that <laughs> I watch other people's art hauls and they're like really hyper and excited and I don't sound very excited, <laughs> but believe me, I am excited. So let's start with this one, which you're not gonna be able to see on the page, but let's get that one out of the way. This is Buff Titanium and Let's just swatch it. I can just about see it on this paper. This paper is a kind of ivory, creamy color. And this is just slightly more, I'd say slightly more pink, perhaps. Anyway, I can just about see it, but you probably won't be able to. I'm just, oh, whoops, <laughs> I'm just gonna label it. Um, buff, oh, whoops, titanium. Okay, on to the next one. Uh, what's this? This is raw umber 50%. Let's see how, oh, it's darker than I expected. Yeah, that's rather a nice color actually. It looks slightly, is it slightly erring towards green? Um, could just be the light. Anyway, that's nice. That's darker than I was expecting. I like that. Right, raw umber 50%. Let's write that down. Um, again, I think what I'm going to do is talk you through the first few, give you my first impressions of them, and then we'll speed up the footage. It's very satisfying, by the way, swatching. I mean, just look at this. Let's just go back a page. Look at that. Is that not a thing of beauty? Okay, right, next one. Violet grey. Now this colour looks like my type of colour. This looks like something, oh yes, this is something I am going to use a lot. I already know it. Gosh, that is a gorgeous colour. Could I just say that I love the style of these pencils. I think they are so beautiful. I love the wooden, do we call, what do we call it on a pencil? Barrel? Is it called a barrel? Casing? <laughs> Whatever, I love the wood and then the little painted tip and the white writing, even the typeface is beautiful. Um, just a small thing, but it brings me a lot of pleasure. I love good design. Right, let's write violet gray. Okay, this one is French gray. I love that name. Let's see what it looks like when we swatch it. That is also a bit, gosh, these pencils, oh my word, I, they are so pleasurable to use. I really like my Polychromos, um, these ones. Let's just get that out to show you. Um, Faber-Castell Polychromos. Uh, I was using those in my sketchbooks previously. Um, they are lovely. I really like them. I would rate them very highly. But I have to say, these luminance pencils are something else. I am absolutely loving these. Um, okay, let's write down French grey. Okay, sepia, 10%. Oh, wow, this is like... Oh, no, it isn't. I was going to say it's a bit like a lighter version of the violet grey, but I can see it's 
has much more brown in it. Oh, I love these sepias. They're very nice. Um, if you'd like me to do a video that is a kind of putting together some colour palettes um, with different materials, I can do that. Just let me know in the comments below whether that's something you would be interested in because I'm very much interested in swatching different colour palettes as well and I haven't really shown that much of that on my channel so far so I can do that if you would like okay I'm going to speed this footage up I finished colour swatching the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils and this is how the page looks. I'm so happy with the colour palette I decided to go with. I think we have a really nice range of muted colours um, through to these beautiful greys and blues and then the slightly brighter colours to give just a little kind of pop of colour that I like to have in my work sometimes. I work with a lot of muted and rich colours but I do like to add just this little bit of colour and I think these will actually encourage me to use even more colour in my work as will the beautiful neo colours. Um, yeah so a lot of thought went into <laughs> curating this palette and I'm really happy with it. There are probably a couple more that I would like to add. Um, Jackson's Art were out of stock of some of the shades so I'll go back at a later date and I'll add to this. Um, as you can see I have swatched 23 and I told you I had 24 that's because I bought two Payne's Grey pencils because I know that this is a shade I'm going to use a lot so overall loving the pencils really happy with the palette and can't wait to create some work with them okay so we're going to try these Liquitex acrylic markers I'm very excited about this if only I could get into them, <laughs> then we could actually do some testing. Ah, got it, okay. Right, what do I have to do? Shake well before use, press down nib several times, place cap after use and store in horizontal position. Oh, okay, store them like that and not like that. Right, okay. I'll give it, sorry about the noise, a really good shake. Okay, this, what's this? This is a, oh, it's quite a firm foam nib. Okay, I thought it was a sponge, but it actually feels sort of foamy. Right, let's try this. So you have to, I think, pump them a few times. Is anything happening? Oh yeah, something's happening. You won't have to do this every time, apparently. You just have to get, do you see that the ink is flowing down into that nib now? Oh, sorry, not ink, paint, because this is actually acrylic paint. Right, I think we've got it flowing, shall we? Oh, wow. Oh, I think I need to get it flowing. Right, there we go. Oh gosh, that is beautiful. Oh wow. Look at that colour. I'm not sure how well this is going to work in this sketchbook. I don't know whether it will bleed through. But that is beautiful. Um, this is Cobalt Turquoise Hue. I'm going to just put the cap on. Remember to store it horizontally. Um, let's just write that here, cobalt, turquoise hue, um, this is going to be great if I want to lay down areas of colour very quickly, it doesn't seem to be coming through so far, we'll give it a minute and we'll just see. 
that's lovely. I really like that. I mean, it's not for obviously being very fussy and accurate in your work, but it does seem like it will be very good for adding big areas of colour or just um, yeah, laying down some colour so that you can work on top of it sort of as a background. So that's really interesting. I wonder what um, I how it'd work on canvas. Right, I'm going to give this light portrait pink a go. It's actually coming down the nib. I think you can also get replacement nibs for these. Oh, yes, it's flowing. I don't need, oh, wow. Oh, my word. Now that is a nice colour. Gosh, that's beautiful. In fact, that's a little bit darker than I expected, but I like it. Um, yeah, I wonder how long these will last. They're such a great idea. I love this. Um, okay, well, it goes on smoothly. Looks fantastic. Don't know how long it takes to dry. That one's still a bit wet, so I'm guessing probably about the same amount of time as normal acrylic paint would. Give it a few minutes and it will probably be fine. Right, light portrait pink. And you'd be able to work on top of it. The other one we have, I got a very sort of pale, neutral colour, um, unbleached titanium. I don't know how well it will show up on here. Let's have a go. See, I'm a pro at opening these now. First one was difficult. <laughs> now I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's lovely. You see, I can imagine kind of filling a page with this colour and then working on top of it. I think that would be that would be quite interesting to do. That's really lovely. Okay, I'm very happy with this palette. I have a feeling I might be buying more of these. I don't know how I'm going to get on with them, but first impressions. Very good. Okay, I think they smell a little bit more than the normal acrylic paints, but it's not a horrible smell. It's not too strong. Titanium. Okay, so there we go. Liquitex acrylic markers. You can also get them in different um, nib sizes as well. This one is 8 to 15 millimetres, depending on how you angle it. But you can get much finer ones than this. Yep, I like those. On the same page because these haven't dried yet and if I try to turn the page they're going to stick together. Um, I'm going to just test out the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. Um, these are the soft brush ones. I think that these really aren't going to show up very much. I believe they have India ink in them. Yeah, they do. They're waterproof, they have high light fastness and acid free. Oh, by the way, yes, I meant to tell you about the Liquitex acrylic marker. They also are light fast and permanent. So great to use on finished works of art as well that are going to be framed or displayed in some way. Um, right, this is the warm gray. Oh, this is lovely. Gosh, it feels lovely to work with. I mean, it's probably not really showing up, is it? I can't, or maybe a bit. I'm trying to look at the screen to see whether you can see. If I layer it, it shows up a little bit. It feels lovely though. It's actually, it does feel like using a brush. So that's, I think that's the most brush-like brush pen I've ever used. Okay, warm grey. That creates a very nice background to something if I wanted to work on top of that um, the next one actually should we try let's try the dark indigo let's see how dark the dark indigo is oh wow oh I like these now this is definitely let's just see if we layer that a bit okay so that's how it looks with one coat and that's how it looks 
well that's three now I guess isn't it so you can layer them to achieve more depth gosh this is beautiful I think this color is one I'm going to be using a lot I love indigo in my work anyway Wow, I really like this. Look at this. I don't know how well you can see it, but it actually looks like I've used paint, basically, which is fantastic. If you're on location somewhere and you don't want to take paint, just take these pens. Um, okay, so we'll write dark indigo beside this one. I haven't left myself. much space to test the other one have I oh dear right it's a good thing I've only got three this is cold gray let's just do we'll just do it in a tiny little section down here because basically that's all I've left right this is very pale as well so if you layer it it gets a little bit darker I don't know if they go darker as they dry perhaps they do Right, but I'm liking those as well. I'm so happy with everything. Let me just write cold grey so I don't forget. Um, I'm really happy with everything I've bought. I can't wait to show you further videos with me actually using them for my artwork um, rather than just testing them. But thank you. I think this will be it for this video. I think we're going to have to say goodbye because it's going to turn into such a long video. I hope this was in some way informative or interesting to you. If you'd like to see more of these type of videos, please let me know in the comment section below. Give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, that would be fantastic if you could do that or you felt like doing that. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.